Hey there, welcome to the Get Fully Funded channel. I'm Sandy Reese, Chief Encouragement Officer here at Get Fully Funded, where we help small nonprofits learn to raise the money they need to fully fund their budget. I am here to help you master the art and science of fundraising, tip by tip, and I've got a really good one for you today. But first, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that every time we upload a new piece of content, you're the first one to know. All right, let's get to this week's tip. Good fundraising, successful fundraising is based on donor relationships and that depends an awful lot on donor communications. One of the most underutilized tools in your toolbox is your newsletter. Now, I'm gonna get on my soapbox about this, so let me just go ahead and give you that warning ahead of time. Most newsletters, and I'm talking about print newsletters and email newsletters, are crap. Sorry, but they are. They're very inwardly focused. They're done at the last minute. I know you've got a hundred things on your plate and the newsletter gets pushed and pushed and pushed and it doesn't go out on time and then you catch it three months later and you're like, oh, we just hired new staff, throw that in there. Oh, we just won this award, throw that in there. And the problem with that is yes, you get it done and you get to check it off, but it does not work to serve the main need and that is to communicate with the donor. See what happens when you throw a newsletter together at the last minute, you're shoving information out and it's probably not what a donor cares about. So we have to hit the time out button. We have to hit the pause button. We have to think about what donors care about. Now the good news is I'm going to tell you what to put in your newsletter. Are you ready? Grab your pen because there's several really specific things. And the first thing that I, I want you to do is mark on your calendar the date that this needs to go out. This is important. Have you ever had that friend that the only time you hear from them is when they want something? <laughs> we all know somebody like that, right? Don't be that. If you don't send any communications out, all you're doing is showing up going, give me money, give me money, give me money, and that feels terrible. Your newsletter can help alleviate that. Your newsletter, if it's done right, if it's full of things that make the donor feel good, and if there's no ask, that newsletter is gonna serve that purpose of offsetting all the asks that you're doing. So it's really important that it goes out consistently. So you may say, hey, we're gonna send our newsletter out on the second Wednesday of the month. We've got a client who does that. And then you know you've got that deadline and this is really important, it has to go out. Now, I know that there are people who are watching this who are thinking, okay, that's great, but I have so much to do, I can't possibly write a newsletter every month and get it out on time. Yeah, you can. You can. Here's the thing. Your newsletter needs to be very short so that as the donor, I can read and consume it in 10 to 30 seconds. And I am not kidding. Now, let me talk specifically about email newsletters because that's predominantly what most everybody does. <clears throat> Your print newsletter is a whole different thing. And again, you want to keep that simple. I just saw one recently that had so much stuff crammed in it. It looked uh, horrible. It did not look visually pleasing and I just threw it away. I didn't want to read it. Okay. So that's a whole other thing. Email newsletters. Here's what you want to do. Number one, you got to have a good subject line. The subject line has one job and that is to get that email open. If your newsletter has the word newsletter in the subject of it, it's not going to work. Do not use the word newsletter in the subject line of your newsletter. You want to use something compelling about the story that you're going to tell ask a question, just something. Do not say latest news from our organization. People don't care. They don't want to read another newsletter. So what do you do? You get really good at subject lines. We've got a whole blog on subject lines and we'll link to the post and that'll help you a lot uh, reframe how you think about subject lines. Okay, next thing, start your letter. Start your newsletter with a nice masthead at the top that's colorful and on brand for your organization and then you lead right in with a story. Your story needs to be just a couple of sentences long, and I'm not kidding. You're gonna use one sentence paragraphs. You're gonna keep sentences very short, because remember, people have the attention span of a goldfish, and they're not gonna read a lot. So at most, four sentences in your story. If you wanna click, have them click from there over to a blog article that tells more, that is totally fine, or to a video, or to a social media post, totally fine but you're gonna tell enough in that story that somebody can read it and get the gist of it. 
One of the organizations that we support that does the best job of this is Draft Gratitude. You can find them at draftgratitude.org. Sign up for their newsletter. They are brilliant at this. You're going to get about three or four sentences in a story that tells about a draft horse that they've saved, and then you're going to go, wow, that's awesome. <clears throat> the second thing you're going to put in your newsletter is an update. So if you had a story last month about someone your organization has served, this month you could put an update with just three or four sentences of what's going on and how there's more success in this story. Okay, these two, the story and this update is designed to build confidence. The whole point here is you want donors to go, gosh, they're doing great work over there. I love this. Okay, you with me? Then you can drop down and include uh, a thanks to you. So if you've had businesses, scout troops, media that's done stories or things like that, you can do a quick bulleted thanks to, thanks to Boy Scout Troop, blah, 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 for helping with da, da, da. Thanks to radio station WIVK for helping with da, da, da. So you can publicly acknowledge donors, supporters, scout troops, clubs, that that would mean a whole lot to them. So use the thanks to you. You can do a quick save the date. So if you've got volunteer orientation coming up, a fundraiser, something else that people might be interested in, you can include a short list of save the date. That is about all you want to include. I would not do a great big splash on, here's a big blurb about our last event. That's in the past and a lot of people really don't care. If you do feel really strongly about encouraging including that, do it at the bottom, keep it really short, okay? All right, so there's what you include. Don't forget contact information, links to social media and so forth. This is all you need to include in your newsletter. And so if you set up a template, it's gonna be real easy every month to pick a story, write four sentences, an update, write four sentences. It's your thanks to you. You might not have any and that's fine. And then anything you wanna do as save the date, if you don't have either of those, include a fun fact. Include a little something that people may not know about your organization and that's it. And that's how you keep this newsletter donor focused and that's how you make it easy for you to get it out every month because consistency and communication is gonna be super important. So the bottom line here is make sure your newsletter is donor focused and send it out consistently because that is what's gonna help you build the relationships so that when you ask for money, you get what you're looking for. If you like this video, there's plenty more where this one came from. Be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so that every time we add a new tip, you're the first to find out. I don't want you to miss a single thing.